did. If he can do that, he can heal this man. They were acting on substance. Their hope was not unfounded. Their hope was, we, I, I, we believe that he can heal you because he healed others. It was the evidence of things not seen. Well, I've not seen him heal you, but I've seen him heal others, so we know that he can do it. And then their faith was, they exercised, they expressed their confidence because of what they had known him to do before. The story of an old man who was wandering in the desert, he looking for water. You ever been just so thirsty that, that it hurt? You ever been so thirsty you were mad? Oh, man, I have been thirsty before. So thirsty that I thought if I don't get something in just a moment, man, I'm going to pass out. You ever been that thirsty? He's going through the desert looking for water. He sees an old shack in the distance, and he approaches that shack, and he goes up on the porch, and, man, there's a well, one of those wells, you know, you pump like this, and, and, and uh, man, oh, boy, I'm going to get some water, and there's a sign. There's a jug there, a one-gallon jug full of water, and there's a sign that says use all of the water in this jug to prime the pump for the well. Well, the man's instincts were, no, oh, you got to be kidding, man. I, I don't want to, uh, what if I use all that and the well doesn't work? You, you, some of you old timers remember that. You'd have to prime that pump. You'd start pumping and, boy, the water come up. I said, boy, my instincts are just to drink this jug of water. But that sign says to use the water to prime this pump, and then I can have enough water for me and to fill the jug back up for the next guy. He went ahead and poured the water into the pump and began to pump him. And finally, there was an abundance of water that came to the top. That's a, kind of a demonstration of faith. You know, the Bible is also a well of water for us. Well, it's water to the thirsting soul. It, it, it compares itself to milk. It compares itself to meat. The Bible has the answer for our questions. The Bible has the answer for our needs. The Bible uh, is our, our a lamp into our feet, a light into our path. It's our guide. It's, it's the, the foundation that our life should be built upon. We read here in Jude this about faith and building uh, our lives upon our holy faith. Uh, Jude was a, a general epistle that was written to the people warning about false teaching that was starting to creep in. In verse 3, once again it says, Behold, I, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Man, there were false teachers coming in that said, no, if you're going to be saved, you, you have to keep the law of Moses. Well, you have to be circumcised in order to be saved. You can't be saved if you're not circumcised. And, oh, no, if you're doing this, well, you can't be saved if you're doing this. Nevertheless, Jesus said, all you've got to do is believe. That thief on the cross said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Hey, all he had to do was believe. That's faith. In verse 20, they're told this, this set of beliefs here that he said to build your life upon. He says they're told to build their lives on this faith. So their lives were to be built on the doctrines of the Word of God. So how do we go about building this faith? How do we go about building our life on this faith? How do we go about developing this life of faith? I've heard some say, boy, I... I wish I had as much faith as so-and-so did. I wish my faith were as strong as so-and-so's. I, I wish my faith were strong enough in this situation. I wish I had more faith in this situation. Anybody ever been there? So how do we build this faith? How do we develop this life of faith? Number one, foundation right here by the Word of God. It is by the word of God. We, we get this idea that this faith is just like, well, if I just wish upon a star and believe. No, that's not faith. That's, that's uh, uh, imagination. If, uh, if, I just, if I just believe hard enough, I believe, I believe, I believe. But that's not what faith is. It's built upon the word of God. The Word of God will produce faith in someone. And that's why I, as your pastor, am constantly saying, look, you need to be in the Word of God every day for yourself. If you want to live a life of faith, if you want to have a strong faith in the Lord, you've got to be in the Word of God because it's the Word of God that produces that faith. Listen, Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. 
1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God that which liveth uh, and abideth forever. Let's take salvation, for instance. Uh, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord might be saved. Is that what that's saying, might be saved? No, no that, that doesn't give too many guarantees, does it, that might be saved. Ask somebody, hey, do you, if you die right now, you know for sure you'd go to heaven? Well, don't think anybody can know for sure. Well, I'm just not sure. I'm hoping so. I'll say, well, you know, the Bible says you can know so. Oh, no, we can't know. Well, let me ask you something. Can God lie? No. So I remember as a young man, I realized, man, I am lost without Christ. I was 13 years old. I realized, boy, I've never trusted Christ as my Savior. Never even, I've never asked him to save me. I've just gone to church and just been a good boy. Thought I was going to heaven just because, hey, I was a good boy. And I remember my Bible teacher, I just started going to Christian school, and, and the Bible teacher was teaching about hell, and all of a sudden, boy, the light came on. I realized, man, I'm lost. And I remember somebody showing me that verse. Well, I'd already memorized this verse, but I went to one of my teachers, and they showed me this verse. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. No might to it. So shall be saved. All I do is call upon the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. When the Philippian jailer jumped down in there and said, Hey, fellas, what must I do to, uh, to be saved? Well, all you got to do is believe. The word of God. And so I heard the word of God where it said, All I have to do is ask Christ to save me and just take him at his word. I remember as a 13-year-old boy got down on my knees. Right, It was a, at Northside Baptist Church during a, uh, a chapel service for our school. Ron Riley was preaching at the I walked, made my way down, and I came down two sections over and knelt down with Richard Hoke right there at the front pew, and, and he took me through those verses I already knew, but I asked Jesus Christ right there. I said, based on your word and your promise, your promise, I'm asking you to save my soul. What was that? that was, that's faith. What produced that faith? Well, Grandma didn't produce that faith. Uh, the preacher didn't produce that faith. The word of God produced that faith. Now, let's go a little further. The Word of God grows your faith. Not only does the Word of God produce faith, that first faith being that faith, the salvation, just asking Christ to save him, just taking him at his word, just trusting him. But it also grows the faith. Did you know that there are over 32,000? Now, I didn't count them all. I'm just taking somebody else's word for this, okay? Over 32,000 promises in the Bible 32,000 promises in the Bible Abraham in Romans chapter 4 verse 20 the Bible says this about Abraham and promises he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God hey how what would you do if if God came to you he had said listen you're gonna have a son and through that son all the nations of the world will be blessed and your seed will be as the sand of the sea and as the stars of the skies Oh, man, this is great. So God gives you a little boy, finally. You name him Isaac. And God comes to you and he says, Hey, Tyler, here's what I want you to do. You see Mount Moriah over in the distance there. I want you to take your only son, the son I promised to you. I want you to take your son. You know that one who all the nations of the earth will be blessed and your seed will be as the sand of the sea and the stars of the sky. I want you to take that son, take him up to Mount Moriah. I want you to lay him on an altar. I want you to plunge a, a knife into him and offer him for a sacrifice. Now, the Bible says that Abraham didn't stagger at the promises. Abraham, I'm sure he, he was a little concerned and a little confused. He said, okay, God, if that's what you want, that's what we'll do. And he takes his son and he takes some fire, takes some wood, and, and he takes his son and some service. They get to the base of Mount Moriah and he says, now, servants, y'all wait here. We're going to go up here and offer this sacrifice to God. And on the way up, little Isaac says, hey, Daddy, I see we have the fire, we have the wood, we have the knife, we have everything, but we don't have a lamb. They said, well, God will provide himself a lamb. We look in the New Testament in the book of Hebrews, and it says that Abraham was convinced that if he offered Isaac as a sacrifice, he was so sure of God's promises that he was sure God was going to raise him from the dead. Man, that's a lot of faith right there. 
Well, I, I know I, I don't understand this doesn't make sense, but I do know this that God, everything He's promised to me, He's kept His word this far. There's no reason for Him to start lying now. And so because I've seen Him come through on His word before, I know He'll come through on His word now. If He wants me to offer my son as a sacrifice, then He must be going to raise Him from the dead. Boy, this is going to be great. How did Abraham have such faith in the word of God? Because he kept relying on the word of God in the past. Hey, we've got to hear the word of God. Remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Man, we ought to be striving to constantly saturate our minds and our hearts with the word of God. In 1 Corinthians 2, 4 through 5, it says this in my speech. And my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He said, my teaching, my, my speech, my preaching, it was with the power of God. Why? So that you would not build your life on the philosophies of man, but on the Word of God. Hey, you ought to try to hear preaching as often as you can. Man, you ought to listen to preaching. You ought to, uh, uh, well, I was going to say get them, CDs back there, but that's my preaching. You're not missing much there, are you? Uh, but hey, there's certain websites I go to. I'll listen to some good preaching. I get preaching tapes, preaching CDs, listen to that preaching. Why? Because I wanted to build my faith. I like to turn on the radio. I forget what time of day it is. I catch it when I can, though, where Alexander Scorby is reading the Bible. And if I turn it on there, even if I was just wanting to catch some news, if I turn it on there, I'm scared to turn it off of that. Why? Because he's reading the Bible. I don't want to shut him up reading the Bible, so I'll listen to him read the Bible. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You know, we will saturate our minds with everything but the Word of God, won't we? We'll saturate it with all kinds of music, with all kinds of television shows. Hey, listen, there, some of you can name every actor in Hollywood. You, you could probably name, uh, say, their birth dates, their horoscope signs, their last three divorces and who they were with. Uh, you can name all kinds of stuff. And somebody say, well, I want you to turn to the book of Matthew. Matthew, is that in the Bible? We don't know. Why? Because we're not spending time in the Word of God. Our sound preaching and teaching will lead to strong faith. Now listen, here's why it leads to strong faith. It's not because there's anything special about me. But you hear somebody preach or teach the Word of God. You take the truths of the Word of God. By the way, Everything they say may not be the Word of God. You need to go behind me and make sure that's in the Bible, okay? Don't just take it for granted that I'm preaching the truth. I'll do my best to, but I am a man. You need to be in the Bible yourself, feeding yourself. You take the truths of God's Word, and you say, okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these truths. I just heard this preacher or this teacher explain, and boy, now it makes sense to me. It's come alive to me. I'm going to take this. I'm going to apply it to my life. You know what happens when you apply the Word of God to your life? You begin to see, hey, the Word of God is true. And it begins to build your faith. Not only should we hear it, we need to study the Word of God for ourselves. If I want to live a life of faith, if I want to have strong faith, then listen, it does not come from, uh, uh, look, I'm all for good singing, good music. Hey, I'm all for people saying amen, hallelujah. I, I like, oh, oh, Julie, get over here during the, during the congregation. She, she's, she's clapping and swaying back and forth. Uh, uh, she's in her own world praising the Lord. Hey, I like it. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that, Julie. Praise the Lord. I'm just waiting for Miss Edna to start running a lap one day. I'm waiting for her to get up and say, Woo! <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> now, look, I'm all for all that. I'm for the good singing and more tears flowing. But that's not what builds faith. The building faith comes from the Word of God. And the praise, that's the fruit of it comes from the Word of God. Hey, not only reading it and studying, oh, oh, I didn't read my verse there, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Rightly dividing it, knowing what it means. So, hey, boy, this, this verse here, boy, I'm not sure exactly what that means. You know what? I'm going to study that. Hey, you know, we live in the information age, folks. It's easier to study things now than it ever has been. Now, you have to keep your guard up because there's some kooks out there. All right? 
But you can study and see what the Word of God says. But it doesn't, faith doesn't come just by reading the Word of God. It's not just like, okay, I'm, I read the Word of God today, and so now I'm going to have all kinds of faith. No, no, that's just the foundation. If I want to become stronger in the faith, if I want to live a life of faith, if I want to be built upon this faith, then I've got to do something else. I've got to apply what I read. I've got to put it into practice. Hearing the Word of God and applying the Word of God are two different things. We can read a verse about gluttony. I don't like those verses. Amen. Amen. And then sit down and not apply those verses, can't we? <clears throat> Listen, what do you mean by applying the Word of God? Trust God. Trust Him. It, it means to, to take Him at His Word. Listen to this. The man at the pool of Bethesda, he sits there. He can't walk. Jesus comes over. He speaks these words. He says, hey, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Now, listen, that man didn't have to. Did he? He didn't have to get up and walk. He could have sat there and said, hey, man, you're a little strange. I don't know. You're telling me to get up and walk. Look, I can't get up and walk. I've been here for all these years. But what did he do? He said, okay, this man, the son of God, this one who, who I've heard so much about, he told me to rise, take up my bed and walk. I've never been able to do that. But I tell you what, he stands up and he puts his bed on his shoulders and he takes off the walking. Why? Because he did what the word of God said. Peter, he's out in the boat. Jesus come, at night fishing with the other disciples. Jesus comes walking on the water. They said, hey man, look out there. There's a ghost coming at us. Something's walking on the water. And Jesus said, hey fellas, don't be afraid. It's me. Peter said, hey Lord, if it's really you, then bid me to come out to you on the water. He said, well, come on. Come on out here, Peter. Come on out here, Peter. Now, did Peter have to get out of the boat? No. But he did. But preacher, he didn't take but two or three steps on that water before he lost faith and started sinking. How many steps have you taken? He obeyed. Do you understand what I'm saying? That life of faith that comes by reading the Word of God and saying, okay, I don't really fully understand this. I don't really know that I like this part right here, but I'm going to do what it says. They come to Jesus and his disciples and they say, hey, does your master not pay the taxes? And Jesus looks at Peter and he says, hey, Peter was a fisherman now, folks, all right? He said, Peter, I want you to go over here, go over here to the, the body of water, this lake over here. I want you to throw in a line. The first fish you catch, I want you to pull him out and look in his mouth. There's going to be a gold coin in there. Just pay the taxes with that. Now, what would you have thought? Well, yeah, Jesus. I've been fishing all my life. I've wanted to come into a school of those kind of fish, but I've never caught one. You want me to go and throw a hook out in the water? Which I'm not opposed to that, but you want me to pull it a fit, and you're telling me the first one I, I look in the mouth, there's going to be a gold coin in there. Come on now, you're pulling my leg. No, he just obeyed him. He took the words of Christ and he said, Okay, this doesn't make a lick of sense. Does, does that make any sense to y'all? Go go fish, pull up a fish, uh, pull a coin out of his mouth. I mean, that doesn't happen. So he wants me to go pull a fish up, take a coin out of his mouth, and pay the taxes. Okay. If nothing else, it's an excuse to sit on the riverbank. <laughs> These two guys. He goes out there, he throws the hook in, gets a bite. Boy, he pulls that fish in, lifts up, says, well, here goes nothing. Wow, there's a gold coin in there. Do you think that did much for Peter's faith right there? Oh, yeah. How did that build his faith? Because he took what Jesus said and he applied it. He just did it. Those disciples, they come to Jesus. Jesus says, hey, uh, there's over 5,000 people out here that are getting weak and faint. And, uh, look, let's feed them something. Well, we don't have any food. One of the disciples runs up and says, hey, there's a little boy here. He's got a little bag lunch with a few loaves and a couple fishes. 
And Jesus said, okay, that's all we need. Bring it over here. He gets some baskets and he breaks little pieces of bread and, and, and fish and puts them in the baskets. Every, every basket just got a little bit in it. And uh, he blesses the food. He says, all right, fellas, go ahead and feed them. Hey, does that make a lick of sense to you? You have five loaves, two fishes. There's over, there's 5,000 men. That's not counting their wives, their children, ladies, and all that. There's thousands upon thousands, and you just broke a little bit of food. But Okay. When it was all said and done, not only had that crowd eaten all the food, but the disciples took up 12 baskets of fragments. How did that happen? Because they obeyed. That's how it happened. Pastor, boy, I'd like to see God do some great things in my life. Well, listen, first you've got to get in the Word of God and see what He says to do and then obey Him. That's where the faith comes from. Pastor, how do you have the faith you have? Because I've placed my trust in Christ and He's come through for me. He he showed me that His Word is true. And if He's brought me this far, there's no reason I cannot believe He's going to take me the rest of the way. He says to pray, pray without ceasing. He says if we have a need, go to him and ask. I'm I'm talking about a need. Now look, fellas, don't go, oh, Lord, I need a a, a new bass boat. Okay. I'm talking about a need. He says, I'll meet your need. A prayer, and yet we don't pray, do we? Is there any wonder that we have such weak faith? He tells us to give. Not just the tithe, I'm talking about to be givers in life. He says, you give, as I I direct you to give, you give. But we don't. That giving produces faith. He tells us to witness, to be a witness to others and tell others about Christ. You know, there's a lot of promises. Listen, there's a lot of promises in this book. To those that are given specifically to those who will tell other people about Christ and tell people how to be saved. Produces faith when we say, okay, here's what the Word of God says. Whether I like it or not, I'm going to do what it says. Preacher, you keep saying whether you like it or not. There's some things in that Bible that, that you don't like, make you uncomfortable. There are things in this Bible that make me uncomfortable. But I just obey them. Like what, Preacher. Hey, look, me, me and Brother Ralph went knocking on some doors yesterday. I don't know why. Every time I knock on a door, I'm a little bit uncomfortable. I'm a little bit uncomfortable knocking on a door with somebody I don't know. I, I'm from Charlotte. I'm thinking, man, they're going to shoot through this door. They're, they're going to cuss me a blue string. But preacher, why do you do it? It's the Word of God said to Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now listen to this. And lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. You know why we we have Christians that are so weak that they get washed out from serving Christ at at the slightest little bit of rain? Because we're not reading the word of God and then once we do read it, we're not obeying it. Obey it. Obey it. This is not just a good luck charm. We carry well, I'm carrying my Bible. I don't know why why I can't make it. Are you li- listen, the Christian life is not just an idea. It's not just a philosophy. It is a life to be lived. First John five four for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith, that's the victory that overcomes the world. That's the victory that breaks the chains of bondage in our life. That's the victory that overcomes the mountains in our life. It's our faith. And if I want the faith to fight big enemies, if I want the faith to to, to break uh, uh, strong chains, if I want the faith to overcome large mountains, then I've, I've got to build that faith with the Word of God. Malachi, when it's talking about giving... The Lord says this. He says, prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, put me to the test. It's all about tithing there. He says, put me to the test. Says, I've told you, if you do this, I'll take care. I'll meet your needs. It, you, prove me now. Put me to the test. Time after time, we put the Lord to the test in our own life. 
And boy, he's shown himself faithful. Someone once said this. They said, feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. So we trust God. We, we obey God. Another person said this. A person's faith is not judged by what he says about it, but what he does about it. You hear that? A, a person's faith is not judged by what he says about it, but what he does about it. Faith will provoke one to do, not remain idle. I hear often people, preacher, you do too much. I know. I, and if I get downtime, I, I'm like, uh, um, uh, somebody told me this morning and said, when, when, I, when I'm not busy, I think I'm forgetting something. Yeah. Well, why do you keep doing, doing and doing? Because I want God's blessings. My faith, what I believe, provokes me to do. Someone said this, faith is not a pill you take, it's a muscle you use. Get to work. That faith produces action. So we've got to build that faith, right? If I want God to do great things through me, then I've got to build that faith. How do we build that faith? We build that faith by reading the Word of God, hearing the Word of God, by studying the Word of God, and then by doing what it says to do. Another person said this, when God has a big job to do, it is always faith that gets the contract. So look, we see, if I, if I want to build a life of faith, if I want to, to build my life on faith, then it's got to be by the Word of God. And, and then I've got to apply the Word of God. And then there's one more thing here. I've got to separate myself to God and away from sin. You know, when you begin walking with God, Satan is going to do all he can to hinder you. And, and by the way, not just Satan. Your own stinking flesh will hinder you. Hey, listen, I'm never, I've never been so hungry as when I say I want to diet. Your flesh is against you, isn't it? You, you, anybody in touch with me on that? Hey, listen, I can, I can get up early in the morning with a, a lot on my plate to do. I can work through the day, if I'm really busy, work through the day and not eat a thing. Be so busy. Now, it's probably not the healthiest thing. But I can do that. I've done it before. And later think, man, why am I so hungry? Oh, I haven't eaten anything. However, those times when there's been something special and I'd say, uh, or, or something very weighty on me, and I was praying, I said, you know what? I need to fast about this. I'm not going to eat tomorrow. I'm going to pray during that eating time. Son, doesn't matter how busy I am, I wake up thinking, okay, you cannot eat anything today. You're just going to pray during those eating times. Man, before long, if I'm in my office, I'm wanting to chew on the arm of my chair. I mean, I'm hungry. Starting to get a headache. Oh, I've got this headache from being hungry. I haven't eaten. I, I need to eat So No, you can't eat, but I, I need to eat. No, you can't eat. Now, well, I'm getting dizzy. I'm getting lightheaded. I'm getting weak. What happened? I made a decision that I was going to do something for God, and all of a sudden, now my own stinking flesh is against me. Separate to God. Declare your faith. If I want to build my faith, if I want to separate myself to God, then I've got to be willing to declare my faith. Listen, folks, as children of God, as Christians, we ought to be willing to declare our faith without compromise and without shame. It's, it's amazing. How many of you like baseball? Anybody in here like baseball? How many of you have ever just started talking to somebody out about somebody you didn't even know and the subject gravitated towards baseball? And you, you just talked about, but anybody ever done that that likes baseball? Okay. And it, it, were you ashamed of it, Brother Rouse, to talk about baseball? No. You're a Yankees fan, right? That's right. The only shame is when you're pulling for the losing team, right? Talk about it. No shame. It is amazing we talk about things with people we don't even know with no shame and then all of a sudden we think, I need to tell them about Christ. Oh no, that might offend them. Oh no, they'll think I'm weird. Oh no, I, 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 man, that, that's getting kind of personal. 
to build our faith, we've got to be able to declare our faith without shame. I'm not saying you've got to be rude about it. I'm not saying you jump up on the checkout counter at Walmart and say, hey, everybody, I want to tell you about Jesus. All right, and we'll see you do it then, Tyler. Now look, but we must be willing to walk with him unashamedly. Listen to uh, Colossians chapter 2, 6 through 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Hey, we ought to be abounding in this walk with God. Why do we hang our heads as Christians? There's nothing to be ashamed of. I serve the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, my Savior, my Redeemer, my God, my Lord, my Master, my dearest friend, the lover of of my soul I have nothing to be ashamed of you want to build your faith walk with him without shame and first Peter chapter 3 verse 15 says but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear having a good conscience that whereas they speak whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. He said, man, separate yourselves to God and don't be scared to stand for him and to tell people about him. And do it not in, in malice. Somebody was telling me they went soul winning with somebody one time. They went up on this porch and the one young man said, Hey, we're out visiting from the church. Want to know if you're saved? Yeah. Have you trusted Christ as your Savior? And the guy said, Yes, I've, I've trusted Christ as my Savior. I was like, The guy was drinking a beer. He said, Yeah, I've trusted Christ as my Savior. He said, No, nah, you're not saved. He said, Yeah, I've trusted Christ as my Savior. He said, No, nah, if you're drinking that, you must love that more than God, and you can't be saved if you're drinking that. Hey, I don't see there being much love right there. Maybe he just hadn't been taught. Doesn't mean you're not saved. It may mean you're not doing right. Doesn't mean you're not saved. Uh, I think self righteousness is probably a sin too. But we we can go out. We can tell others. Maybe those that we work with, those in our neighborhood. We can tell them about Christ if we want to. We'll look for those opportunities. We'll pray for those opportunities. God will bring those opportunities to us. We can tell him. The Bible says fields are white in the harvest. The labors are few. There's people out there that would trust Christ as Savior if we were just bold enough to tell them. Don't have to be belligerent. Just have to have some boldness. Not only declare your faith, but we need to defend it. We need to defend it. Hey, listen. According to the Word of God, homosexuality is still a sin. Still a sin. Uh, uh, abortion, that, that's, that's still a sin. Murder. Okay. We should be willing to, in love, speak those things out. You know one of the keys to defending your faith? Is you've got to know what it is. You've got to believe it yourself. I think one reason we as Christians falter in this area in defending the faith is we don't really know why we believe what we believe. And if we don't know why we believe what we believe, we really don't know what we believe. And then, hence, that's not really faith. Faith is not just a, a blind following. Remember, it's the evidence of things not seen. It's the substance of things hoped for. It's based upon something my faith is. What's it based on, preacher? The promises of the Holy Word of God. You've got to guard against strong influences. Colossians 2.8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Anything that influences you away from this book is wrong. You need to stay away from it. But here's our trouble. We don't even know what's in the book. 
And if we don't know what's in the book, then we're easily led astray away from the truths of this book. And then we don't have a strong faith because we don't even know what the Word of God says enough to apply it to see His promises fulfilled in our life. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying get in the Word of God and then to the best of your ability, keep living. The best of your ability, you'll still mess up sometimes. Thank God he's a merciful God and we can go to him. He'll forgive us. Let me ask you something. Are you building your faith? Are you closer to the Lord than you were, let's say, a year ago? Is your faith stronger now than it was a year ago? Have you put God to the test by obeying his word? Are you exposing yourself to the word of God? Are you? Hey, as much as you're able, you ought to be in church every time the doors are open if you can. I know everybody can't. I understand that. But you ought to be there to hear them preaching, to to get encouragement from your brothers and sisters in the Lord, to give encouragement. Let me ask you, are you applying the Word of God? I said, okay, here's what the Word of God says. I'm going to do it. Are you separating yourself from the world to God are you building your faith you see I can't build your faith only you can do that I cannot make you grow in Christ only you can do that so how about it are you will you build your faith bow your head and close your eyes please